Hey team, welcome to Sanctuary Systems 200 series, uh, which is a few videos focused on the presentation system, i.e. projection. So just to put this in context again, the presentation system is one of the four sanctuary systems. If you haven't seen the introductory videos 101 through 104, you should go back and check those out. And if you aren't part of our church's team, but stumbled upon this video anyway, welcome. Stick around. You might learn something. So here's a little more detail about how the projection system is set up. There are two projectors. They're what's called short throw projectors, which means they can project over a large area without being very far away. These are older, relatively cheap Optima GT760 projectors. I bought a lot of this stuff used, but I think the whole system, including the mounting hardware, cost less than $1,000. Now, these projectors aren't especially bright, they're not especially high resolution, uh, but between the two of them, we can project a 2452 by 800 image about 22 feet wide, which is suitable for text and high contrast graphics. Now it's not suited very well to full screen video, partly because the projectors just aren't powerful enough, but mainly because of the area in the middle where the two projections are blended together. We'll talk about that more in video 203, but uh, in short, white on black looks great. Anything else uh, varies from eh to ugh. There are a few reasons we opted for this style of presentation as opposed to the large video walls that all the cool churches have. One, it's so much less expensive, um, and that just seems like good stewardship of our limited resources. Uh, two, when a wall of video screens is off, it feels like something is, well, off. So there's kind of a desire to always make sure there's something filling the screens, which is at best unnecessary and at worst distracting. When our projection is off, it's just a wall, just part of the room, nothing is missing. So. Um, I actually like to think of our projection setup as more of a lighting effect than a video screen. Anyway, both projectors are connected via HDMI to the computer in the backstage room, and the computer just thinks of them as two displays. The way we get them to work together is with ProPresenter, the software at the center of the system. If you're watching this video and you're on our tech team, then you probably already know the basics of ProPresenter. But for the sake of completeness, we'll spend the rest of this video talking about the basics of operating ProPresenter. Okay, so let's say you're running ProPresenter on a Sunday morning. Let's assume everything is turned on already. See video 102. Uh, not only that, but ProPresenter has been set up already. More on that in video 202. And the live stream is already going. See video 501. Here's the basic flow of a typical service. So after the band is done rehearsing, you can start out by clicking on the pre-service announcements slide. The window on the upper left in ProPresenter should be showing you what is being broadcast over the live stream. The slides are set up to trigger certain actions that affect things like the countdown timer or what's shown on the live stream or uh, music pads that play under worship songs. It's all pretty automated. so. Most of the time, it's just a matter of clicking to the next slide. Now, at this point, the next slide is the call to worship video. So when you click that slide, music and video begins, which lets people know that the service is starting. As that ends, click the next slide. Now, it doesn't look like there's anything happening in this slide, but it's still important to click it because it triggers the live stream to show the camera feed. Next, you'll be controlling the slides showing the song lyrics. At the beginning and end of each song, there's a blank slide, in case you want to clear things easily. Otherwise, the lyric slides usually go straight through, one after another. But the slides are also labeled to help you keep track of where you are if you have to go back to a verse or chorus somewhere. Also, rather than using the mouse to click the slides, you can advance to the next slide by pressing the spacebar or go forward or backward through the slides with the left and right arrow keys. When you're controlling lyric slides, it's really important to make sure the words are up before they need to be sung. So it's usually a good idea to click the next slide right when people are singing the last word of the current slide. 
Okay. After the opening worship set, there are a few slides to help us transition to the sermon. Clicking this slide will show a screen with instructions for dismissing the kids, but on the live stream, it will just show our church logo. This gives us a chance to have someone move the streaming camera to the best location for this sermon without everyone on the live stream seeing the wobbly camera movement. We'll talk about this again in our videos about the streaming system. Once the camera is in the right position, you can click on the next slide and it will show up again in the live stream. Next up is the sermon. Pastor Brian usually puts the slides in basically the order he wants, but just like with the lyric slides, you've got to pay attention and try to make sure that the most relevant information is what's showing up on the screen, whether that's keeping up with a scripture passage that may be over multiple slides or showing the sermon notes slides at the appropriate time. After the sermon is another set of slides for transitioning back to the closing worship song. The pastor will usually close the sermon in prayer. During the prayer, click the first slide, which shows the church logo and clears the video feed so that someone can move the camera back to the location for music. Once the camera's in place, you can click the next slide, which brings back the camera feed. And then there's the closing worship song. That works kind of like the worship songs in the beginning, basically. And then finally, there's a set of slides for the end of the service. So first, there's the uh, video announcements slide. Click that after the worship song ends. As that plays, someone will move the camera back again to its final position by the tech table. After the announcements, the pastor will close with uh, benediction. So click the benediction slide to uh, re-enable the camera. And then right when the benediction is over, click the kids pickup slide. That'll trigger some light background music as people are mingling. It'll also show a closing slide in the sanctuary reminding people to pick up their kids. And on the live stream, it will show the um, announcement slides again. And that's it. We'll talk about closing out the live stream and uploading the sermon in other videos, but as far as running ProPresenter, that's basically it. The next video is going to dive deeper into ProPresenter, so you'll know more about what's going on under the hood, and um, most importantly, how to set up a Sunday playlist. But before we go, I wanted to make sure you knew a couple other tips. First, to the right of the monitor showing the live stream, there are a bunch of red buttons. These can be used to clear any or all of the elements being presented. The big tall button clears everything. That includes the live stream camera, so you wouldn't usually want to click that. But the smaller buttons to the right of that allow you to clear individual elements or layers. So for example, if uh, background music is playing and it shouldn't be, click the clear audio button. If um, a background slide is showing when it shouldn't be, click the clear background button and so on. Secondly, over in the window on the lower right, there's the macros tab. Now these macros are like shortcuts to make ProPresenter do what it's supposed to do for any given part of the service. So for example, there's a macro for worship and a macro for the sermon, even a macro that's just a clean view of the streaming camera. The slides should be set up to trigger the correct macros, but if not, or if things don't seem right, you can always click a macro to enable it. And one last tip, at the bottom of the main ProPresenter view, there are a few buttons you can click that show you the slides in a different format. Sometimes it's helpful to click through those to see which one of those helps you read the slides best in case you're having a hard time seeing what's on the slides. It's especially helpful for slides with a lot of text uh, during scripture and the sermon. There's the regular slide view that shows you essentially what it's projecting on the wall. Then there's a view that expands the text to fill the space so that it's a little easier to read. Uh, doesn't change what's going to the projection though. And lastly, there's a view that actually shows both of those side by side and stacks all the slides on top of each other like one long list. It's helpful to go through these and see which one works best for you, but usually I just leave it on the regular slide view. Okay, thanks for sticking with me through this video. Next up, setting up a Sunday playlist.